The crankshafts for this paddle steamer engine are going to be made from a piece of um, 3 8 ground rod, 3 8 diameter. I'm trying to decide the best way of effectively drilling through all these bearings such that everything lines up both vertically and horizontally and everything is in the right plane without binding. Now, somewhat extraordinary really, I've actually got a number of really quite long 3 sixteenths diameter fish drills. I've got several of them, no idea where I got them, no idea why I've got them, presumably picked them up from a workshop somewhere, scrap sale. Anyway, I'm kind of debating whether to put some pilot holes through this lot and then use this drill ultimately to follow through to true everything up before I finally commit to uh, drilling, reaming, whatever, the 3 8 hole for the crankshafts. I say shafts, crankshafts, because this engine it has a split crankshaft. It actually is divided in the middle. And there's a separate crank for this side and a separate crank for that side. And that's just how the drawing shows it. So I suppose that's what we'll have to do. I've got to admit I'm having a great deal of trouble interpreting these old drawings. What I've done, best I can, is to carefully mark out and centre pop each bearing for where I think the centre line of the uh, crankshafts should be. And what I propose to do is to drill through on the drilling machine each of these points. Uh, I'll have to see what drills I've got, but a, a diameter slightly less than the 3 16th long drill I've got. To make like a pilot hole right through the lot. And then ultimately um, put this very long 3 16th drill through which will then hopefully sort out any imperfections before finally drilling each one in turn drill and ream for the 3 8 diameter of the cranks. Will it work? Don't know. Right, I've had a bit of trouble lining this, uh, these uh, bearing blocks up. The first three bearings where I centre punched them and put a pilot through, weren't too far off. This one was a country mile off. It was, uh, I'm trying to remember now, too far to the right I think. I must have got something wrong when I did it. Anyway, I've used my long 3 16th drill to line through and that, that drill is parallel horizontally and vertically to the spacer tube by a lot of filing I've I hope corrected the position of the uh, of this hole in this bearing and um, at least within acceptable limits anyway um, so I guess the next test is to uh, I'll put a, a, a longer, slightly larger pilot drill through the lot and see what happens. These long drills are almost never used, but when you do need them, they're fairly handy actually. Now this piece of uh, 3 8 ground rod is the actual rod from which I will make the crankshafts. But you can actually turn that into a reamer 
light grind in the end obliquely I don't think the, as far as I know the angle doesn't matter too much um, as long as this end goes below half the diameter of the reamer and that will actually act this end will actually act as a reamer I first came across this in my 19... 54 book of uh, Lawrence Sperry, The Amateur's Lathe and you, if you're stuck you can actually make a reamer of any size using this method and normally you'd make them out of silver steel or something and harden and temper them but this is a one-off job um, eventually that's just going to get cut off and then, uh, you know, as I say, I'll use this bit of rod to make the crankshaft. But it does actually mean this now will pass through the entire set of bearing supports on this engine and uh, make sure we're of the right diameter. The um, side webs to the two crankshafts on the drawing call to be made out of piece of stock 5 8 wide and 3 16 thick well I ain't got none so I've cut some bits of plate out of this very rough uh, bit of quarter inch plate steel cleaned them up a little bit not perfect as yet um, and carefully put the holes through so that um, hopefully when I put it all together everything on the crankshafts, uh, crank pins etc will all be in line. We wait to be impressed. I'm using my homemade fixture plate um, in a chuck mounted on the table of the milling machine to just round the ends of the uh, crank work. This video clip is speeded up by a factor of three. Right, fairly major step forward. Uh, finished rounding off the ends of all these keeper plates, rounding off of the um, crankshaft webs. As I mentioned before, this is a this engine has a split crankshaft. Um, there's a join in the middle, and apparently that's how they were in prototype. I'll come back to that, no doubt, at some time. Um, the crankshafts are not uh, permanently assembled as yet, this is all just loose, uh, just assembled together just to make sure everything seems to be in alignment, which is best I can judge it is, because clearly if there's any misalignment here of 20 degree, we'd have a bit of an issue on our hands, about which I would not be impressed. Um, but yeah, a nice step forward I think. Good idea or bad idea, who knows. But I'm not totally following the drawing for this uh, diagonal paddle steamer engine. Specifically, I read somewhere, this thing has a, a, a sort of split crankshaft, and I read somewhere that for navigating narrow rivers and the like, it was sometimes an advantage with some of these, they didn't all do it, that the paddles each side could be operated independently. So for example you could stop the paddle this side while turning turning the one this side to help go left and kind of vice versa. Now, I haven't found any information as to how they managed to do that um, but clearly for the straight ahead position uh, it'll be quite difficult to balance the steam on on the two uh, cylinders so that the rotation both sides was equal 
there must have been some sort of clutch mechanism in the middle. Now as we're in the early 1800s here, it wouldn't have been, a, strictly speaking, a clutch as perhaps we know it in 2022 or wherever we are. So I'm assuming, and I have no idea, that it must have been some sort of dog clutch mechanism, I'm guessing, I don't know. So what I'm doing... I'm machining up a dog clutch and if I'm to keep to the 90 degree crank position, which is what I think I ought to do, it's clear that the dog clutch can only engage in one position so that the cranks, when it's going forward, the cranks are then at 90 degrees, which is why I've only machined three uh, slots, I don't know what you want to call them really. I've only machined three slots so that this thing will only engage in one position. Am I right? Don't know. Have I gone nuts? Not sure. It's causing quite a bit of work actually, but it's quite interesting in a funny kind of way. The other issue that's going to arise, I have to say, with this, if I put this clutch mechanism in the middle, there are five eccentrics to go here, four for the Stevenson link valve gear and another eccentric to drive a pump. Now, I don't know what the pump's for, whether it's a bilge pump or something to do with putting water into a boiler, no idea, but anyway, the set of castings did come with this. Um, so I'm going to fit it, a pump, driven from an eccentric on the crankshaft. And I think what that's going to mean is there probably isn't enough room here to get all this lot in. The clutch mechanism and five, five eccentrics. I think what I'm going to have to do, and somehow I've left a little bit of space each side, I'm going to have to move these frames out to create probably another half an inch or so of space here to get all these various eccentrics in. So that's a bit of a nuisance, but it's my own fault. should have thought of this uh, affair before I fixed everything down. Anyway, it's no big deal. I can, um, I can do that. So there we have it. So, what I need to do is to cut a square end on this crankshaft, or what will be the crankshaft, about 9 sixteenths of an inch long. So using all my homemade setups, I've used a depth stop on the tail end here which connects to the uh, carriage. I've used my uh, homemade indexing device so that I can rotate effectively the spindle uh, four times in the correct location. So that I'll get a square on the end of this and the object obviously is to cut a uh, square end on this rod such that this, uh, what will form the dog on the end of the crankshaft will slide on. And by my calculations <coughs> what I need to do is to take a 42 sour cut across this, uh, rotated, and that should, I hope, enable this to fit on. Time will tell. I didn't mention as well, of course, that I've had to use my homemade, very thin, very small dead centre to support the end of this spindle, spindle rather, to stop any tendency to deflect while I'm doing this. 
Well, I hope you're impressed because I know I am. <clears throat> I went all round again and took another thou off and then just cleaned the faces up with a fine file to, re to remove the machining marks and guess what? It fits. Not absolutely crucial, but I hope you can also see that this dog is running um, not perfect, but really pretty true to the shaft. I think I've just impressed myself actually. This video is getting a bit long, so I'm going to break it here and show the machining of the various eccentrics and the finishing off of this dog clutch arrangement for another part, which will be part three.